On May 10, Google hosted a presentation on their official YouTube channel, during which they announced the development of a new AI that promises to be better than ChatGPT. This AI will use voice commands, employ a 3D city map on Google Maps, and predict potential traffic jams in the city. Additionally, with this artificial intelligence, you will be able to receive not only a simple answer like with ChatGPT, but also a detailed answer with various images generated by the AI, much like Midjourney. The difference is that this feature will be free, unlike Midjourney. Alright, in this video we'll be discussing how Google managed to beat everyone without starting a war, why Google is now afraid of AI, what the future might hold in 10 years, and we'll also be reviewing Google's presentation. Let's get started. Each of you may have used or just heard about the recently released AI from OpenAI, which we know as ChatGPT. Well, this AI may have already become old, and in 10 minutes 20 years, people will be talking about it as the very first AI that humanity came up with, before AI became so sophisticated. That's because Google has already entered the war of artificial intelligence, and as we all know, if Google starts doing something, then everyone else will follow suit. At the Google EO 2023 presentation, Google promised to make AI more useful for society, and they showed us the first step towards that with their Help Me Write feature, which they have implemented into Gmail using AI. The idea behind this new feature is to save people time when writing emails. Users will be able to expand on the content created by the AI to include more details. This feature will extract the necessary details from previous email exchanges. When writing an email, a Help Me Write button will appear. Upon pressing it, a text box will open at the bottom of the screen, where the user can describe the essence of the desired message in text format. If the description is too short, the service will indicate that. They showed us a second update, a Google map with artificial intelligence. With AI, you'll never get lost in the city again, and you'll be able to plan your route home more efficiently. Thanks to this AI-powered Google map, cities will be more detailed, and you'll be able to view your route in 3D. Google has also added a feature that allows you to see future traffic and pollution levels in different parts of the city. I hope this Google map update won't slow down my phone, as reality doesn't always match up to expectations, and this update could be a flop. This function hasn't been released yet, but Google plans to launch it soon in cities such as London, New York, Tokyo, and San Francisco. The third thing they presented was a new tool called the Magic Editor in Google Photos. With this tool, even someone who's not familiar with photo editing can easily modify their photos using artificial intelligence. In other words, you can now adjust a wide range of parameters, remove unwanted elements, and even move people in the photo with this tool. But those were just small changes. After that, Google showed us the Palm 2 technology. You might have clicked on this video because of it. Thanks to Palm 2, Google is now even better than ChatGPT and Midjourney. Palm 2 is a large language model developed by Google AI, similar to GPT-4. It is a technology that competes with OpenAI's GPT-4. But I feel like Google has already won by using Palm 2 for medical tasks and incorporating it into 40 languages worldwide. However, the most significant update for Google is the integration of Palm 2 into the Bard AI chatbot, which is already competing with ChatGPT. Two months ago, as an experiment, Google released an AI called Bard that was already performing well and answering questions like ChatGPT, but not as accurately. Google received a lot of feedback from people, and on May 10th they made a lot of improvements to Bard. In this update, the understanding of questions and answers has been improved, and Bard will now answer in great detail with pictures. For example, if we ask Bard the question what are the must-see attractions in New Orleans, Bard will give us a clear answer with rich visual effects that will give us a much better understanding of what we are studying. We can also add an image along with the question, which will allow us to develop our imagination and creativity in a completely new way. Bard can help you create a college application by asking guiding questions, and can also recommend educational institutions with their locations displayed on a map. Additionally, people often ask Bard for help in composing emails and documents, so Google has launched two new export actions to make it easy to transfer Bard's responses directly into Gmail and Google Docs. The next new AI that Google launched, more specifically Google with the company Adobe, is called Adobe Firefly. It generates text from an image. So in the near future, if this AI is released, people will stop using Midjourney and switch to Adobe Firefly, which is free and easy to use. You may be wondering what makes it so convenient. Well, Adobe Firefly won't work as a separate website. Instead, you can use it directly in the Bard chat. But the Bard still has everything ahead of him. In the future, I think it will become even cooler. I believe OpenAI needs to come up with new ideas to improve GPT-4. Alright, so we've all seen how Bard has become much smarter and Google has added another AI that generates art from text. But that's not the end of it. 
Even Google Search, which almost everyone on this planet uses, has changed. Thanks to new generative AI capabilities in the search engine, it takes on more of the work in searching, making it faster for us to understand topics, open up new perspectives and ideas, and simplify task completion. For example, if I'm choosing a place to travel, I can write a more detailed question to Google Search. Next I won't have to go to various websites to read all their articles, scroll down and wait for a 10 minutes 15 second ad. Instead, I will see the answer to my question at the top of the generative AI, with photos and the ability to ask additional questions. The same goes for buying something. I won't have to find my model of product from various stores and still think whether or not to buy it. All I need to do is read the text generated by the AI, which will tell me how much it costs now, what features to pay attention to, the different designs available, and so on, all briefly and clearly. Of course, this search function is convenient and useful for us, but now, it's possible that website owners will experience a decrease in traffic, and they'll lose revenue. So, if you are considering creating your own website, maybe think about it a bit more beforehand. I hope this is the last one you can say. No one can stop Google at this point, so they've improved Google Translate by adding AI. Essentially, it's not just a translator anymore, it's a video translator. Google has created a translator that allows you to translate videos into different languages while also correcting lip movement. At the same time, it preserves the speaker's style and tone. For countries that don't speak English or Spanish, this will be a convenient feature. At the beginning of the video, I promised to tell you why Google is afraid of AI, and that's what we'll talk about now. On the Google AI website, Google tells us why humanity now needs AI, how they develop AI, for what purpose, and so on. But inside these sections, there is a section called our understanding of the complexities and risks that already scares us with its name. This is because Google is one of the most popular technology companies and the most popular website, so if Google is afraid of something, how can we stay calm and think? But if you think about it, AI is not a dangerous technology, it will not destroy humanity as you all fear to imagine, probably. When you start to fear AI, just think about how people were afraid of cars, trains, and airplanes at the beginning of their production. Therefore, there is no need to be afraid, because this section is not about that, but about how Google will be afraid of AI falling into the hands of evil people like hackers, terrorists, and so on. At the beginning, various companies tried to create AI, but only OpenAI succeeded in doing it completely. Now Google has entered this competition, and if Google starts something, then we can expect everything from other companies in the future. It's possible that car companies have already started working on new AI for their cars. In aviation, it's possible that we'll be flying on planes that are controlled by AI in the future, which won't make mistakes unlike humans. Even from companies like McDonald's, we can expect AI that simplifies our lives. All of this is possible because humans humanity is developing too quickly. In 10 years, it's likely that nothing will change much in this world. We'll just accept AI as a common thing and won't fear their uprising as we do now. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye everyone.